Welcome and thank you for your interest in the heat recovery tool. This tool offers a straightforward and efficient way to evaluate heat recovery opportunities. For example, you can assess the potential of recovering excess heat from cooling processes to replace your gas boiler or even sell the heat to an external user. The tool provides crucial information such as potential energy savings, investment and operating costs, and the payback period. The heat recovery tool gathers information to recommend a suitable system architecture for your heat recovery opportunity. This recommendation depends on the temperature of your heat source and whether you plan to use the excess heat on-site or supply it externally. The tool collects necessary data on both the excess heat source and the heat consumer. By linking this data with the prices of electricity and gas, the tool provides an initial evaluation of potential energy savings, CAPEX, OPEX, and the estimated payback period. To access the tool, please visit heatrecoverytool.danfoss.com to reach the tool's landing page. Scrolling down the landing page, you will find quick links to news and updates, frequently asked questions, and the option to contact us. To start using the tool, simply click on Let's Start. In this segment of the video guide, we will present a real heat recovery scenario. On the left side, you see the existing heating system with a gas boiler as the heat source. On the right side, you see the cooling process of the same facility. The approach of this heat recovery project is to utilize the heat that is wasted to the environment via the cooling towers. This heat can be harnessed to heat the facility, effectively replacing the gas boiler. To achieve this, we will employ a heat pump. The heat pump will capture the heat from the cooling process elevate the temperature to the required level, and supply the heat into the existing facility's heating loop. Now that you have a general understanding of how heat recovery can be implemented, let's examine the data the tool requires to perform the calculations. Three key elements are crucial. 1. The excess heat source. 2. The heat demand. 3. Costs of electricity and current heating source, in this case gas. First, we need to assess the capacity available from the excess heat source. In this specific scenario, measurements have shown that, on average, 800 kilowatts of heat are rejected through each cooling tower, totaling 1,600 kilowatts. Second, we need to determine the supply and return temperatures. In this case, the supply temperature is 24 degrees Celsius, and the return temperature is 16 degrees Celsius. These temperatures are critical for determining the performance of the heat pump. Lastly, we need to understand how many hours per year the excess heat source is available, which in this case is 5,500 hours. Switching over to the demand side. In terms of data requirements, it is similar to the excess heat source data, but here the focus is on the demand side, or in other words, the requirements for facility heating purposes. The heating demand capacity is 800 kilowatts, which corresponds to the capacity of the current gas boiler and the peak load of the facility heating. The required supply temperature is 60 degrees Celsius, and the return temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. As with the excess heat source, we need to know how many hours per year the facility needs to be heated, which in this case is 5,500 hours. The electricity price for our example case is 15 cents per kilowatt hour, and the gas price is 8 cents per kilowatt hour. Now that we have all the data the tool needs, we will switch back to the tool and perform the calculation. In step 1, your choices will determine the system architecture necessary for making your heat available for recovery and reuse. Click on the red info buttons to access further information and explanations. Now, Decide whether the excess energy can be used directly without requiring an additional temperature increase. In our example scenario, we need a temperature increase, so we will select No. However, in other scenarios with higher excess heat temperatures or lower demand temperatures, you might be able to use the heat without necessarily increasing the temperature. The next question is whether you will use the heat at your own facility or supply it to an external system. In our example scenario, we want to use the heat at our own facility, so we will select this option. Once you have made both selections, a recommended system architecture will be displayed on the right side. Now press Next, 
in the top right corner to proceed to step 2. In step 2 we gather information about the excess heat source, including the medium carrying the heat, capacity, temperatures, media, and profile. If any parameters are unclear, please refer to diagram info. In our example, the heat is extracted from process cooling, and the medium carrying the heat is water. Next, enter the capacity of your excess heat source, along with the supply and return temperatures. For our example, the excess heat capacity is 1,600 kilowatts, the supply temperature is 24 degrees Celsius, and the return temperature is 16 degrees Celsius. To determine the annual availability of energy, the next step is to gather information about your excess heat profile. You have two options to proceed. One option is to enter your yearly hours of excess heat availability, such as the yearly operating hours of your cooling system. This approach is simplified but effective for gaining a preliminary understanding of the heat recovery potential. The more detailed alternative is to select Custom, Set Daily and Weekly. If your working and production hours are fixed from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you can set this in the custom fields. You can also select the days of the week when the excess heat source is available. Additionally, you can customize the excess heat source capacity for each month if necessary. Returning to our example scenario, we will enter 5,500 hours and use the yearly option. Press Next in the top right corner to proceed to step 3. Step 3 mirrors Step 2, but the focus shifts to the side of the heat consumer. Here you need to enter the capacity, supply temperature, and return temperature of your heat demand. In our example scenario, the demand capacity is 800 kilowatts, with a supply temperature of 60 degrees Celsius and a return temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. Similar to Step 2, you have two options for setting a demand profile in the tool. You can either specify the yearly hours of heat demand or customize it by defining working hours, weekdays of operation, and monthly capacity of your heat demand. In this example, we will again use the yearly option and enter 5,500 hours. Press Next in the top right corner to proceed to step 4. The data in Step 4 is necessary to evaluate the financial aspects of the heat recovery opportunity. First, please select the country and electricity costs. The county selection is necessary to calculate the CO2 savings as the electricity mix varies from country to country. The electricity costs are crucial to calculate potential savings by electrification of your heating purpose. To compare the current costs with the potential of electrification please also provide the current costs for heating. Price heat sales becomes relevant if you are selling your heat to an external system. For our example scenario we will select Denmark as the country of installation. The electricity price per kilowatt hour is 0.15 and the cost for gas is 8 cents per kilowatt hour. Press Next in the top right corner before you get the results of your opportunity. Please sign up and agree to the subscription terms and Danfoss privacy policy. Now let's explore the results of the calculation. On the left-hand side, you'll find basic information regarding your input data, allowing you to double-check your entries. Moving further to the right, we can examine the system design conditions. The excess heat box displays both the nominal and used capacity, indicating the amount of heat energy that can be recovered and utilized based on your excess heat data. The volume flow of the pump is also shown, which is essential for calculating the energy costs associated with the pump. If your system includes a heat recovery unit, its capacity will be displayed. The intermediate loop between the heat recovery unit and the heat pump shows the supply and return temperatures, along with the pump and its volume flow. A note that in our example scenario, no heat recovery unit is utilized.
In the heat pump box you can view the power consumption of the compressor, which is necessary for boosting the temperature. Based on this power, the electricity consumption of the heat pump is calculated. The heat consumer box displays the capacity of the heat demand, along with the supply and return temperatures of your heating loop. The pump and its volume flow are also shown here. Further to the right, you'll find the Energy and Emissions section, where you can explore your heat recovery opportunity through graphical representations. Available Excess Heat This represents the total amount of energy per year that could potentially be recovered. Excess Heat Recovered This indicates the amount of energy utilized based on your demand inputs. If a heat pump is part of your heat recovery project, the compressor power will contribute additional heat, which is highlighted in the light blue box. If there is more excess heat available than your demand requires, a portion of this excess heat will remain unrecovered. This additional unrecovered heat can be utilized, for example, by supplying it to a district heating network. Conversely, if there isn't enough heat available to fully meet your demand, there will be an uncovered portion, meaning your current heating system will still be necessary, albeit with a reduced load. In relation to the recovered heat, you can view the energy required for the heat pump and pumps. The difference between the energy used by the heat pump and pumps and the recovered heat offers an initial overview of the potential energy savings achieved through heat recovery and reuse. Below you can see your potential annual CO2 reductions. These savings assume that the heat consumer is replacing a gas boiler by reusing excess heat. Let's delve into the financial analysis section. In this part, you can explore the financial aspects of the heat recovery opportunity. If you have opted to supply your excess heat externally, there will be both supplier and consumer perspectives, each with its own capital expenditure, CAPEX, operating expenditure, OPEX, and payback period. Initial Overview On the left, you'll find an initial overview of your capital expenditure. Operating Costs Further to the right, your operating costs are detailed, segmented into Electricity for pumps Electricity consumption of the heat pump Service costs for the heat pump and heat recovery unit. Operating cost savings. Recovery energy revenue. This information culminates in your annual balance. Additionally, on the right-hand side, you can explore the cumulative CAPEX and OPEX over the next 10 years. This analysis helps you assess the financial benefit of your investment each year by comparing the capital expenditure with the annual savings. In the bottom right corner, you'll find a simple payback estimation. If you wish to save this report, click on Generate Report at the bottom.